everyone and welcome to chemistry class our topic for today is gas law in the course of this class we'll look into boy's law child's law the general gas equation and dalton's law of partial pressure so let's start let's proceed boy's law was the relationship between volume and pressure of a gas was first stated by robert boyle in 1662 one, and Boyle's law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to the pressure, provided that the temperature remains constant. Take note of the word temperature remaining constant. According to Boyle's law, volume of a gas increases as the pressure decreases and vice versa. And what does this mean? It means that as the volume of the gas increases, the pressure decreases. And as the volume of the gas decreases, the pressure increases. And one of the physical illustrations of Boyle's law is the application of a bicycle tire pump. You might have observed when using a bicycle tire pump that the increase in pressure of the tire pump leads to a, a reduction in volume. And you, you can also look at um, the diagrammatic illustration we have here. You'll notice that in the first um, vessel, the piston was not um, used to, was not, the piston was not really applied. So we had increase in volume. While in the second vessel where the piston was applied, which means increase in pressure, we have, we see a reduction in volume of the gas. So let's go to the mathematical expression of boy's law you know from the law we said that the volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to pressure so we have v inversely proportional to pressure so with our knowledge of variation we have v is equals to k over p where v represents volume and p the pressure of the gas at a constant temperature so we can relate it our formula to be p1 v1 is equals to p2 v2 all right, so with that knowledge in mind, we can move to our worked example. The question says 375 centimeter cube of a gas has a pressure of 770 millimeter mercury. Find its volume if the pressure is reduced to 750 millimeter mercury. All right, so there's something you have to put in mind when working problems like this. The first thing you do when you when you note problem like this is to list out your parameters. So the question says three seven five centimeter cube, and we know that centimeter cube is a measurement for volume. So we we'll write that as our V one because that's the first volume we are coming across. Then um, the the pressure seven seventy millimeter mercury is the first pressure we are coming across. So that's our P one, and of course we are looking for volume, which is V two, and we have our P two to be 750 millimeter mercury so using our boys formula we are actually looking for v2 so we make v2 the subject of the formula here we have p1 v1 over p2 so we just insert in our figure so v2 is equal to 770 times 375 all divided by 750 which gives us 385 centimeter cube so the new volume of the gas is 385 centimeter cube so i hope you understand that all right, so we move to Charles Law. Well, Charles Law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in Kelvin, provided the pressure remains constant. Note here that in Charles Law, pressure remains constant. So in other words, the volume of the gas decreases as the temperature decreases and vice versa, meaning that as the volume of the gas also increases, the, the temperature will also increase increase so one of the physical illustration of child's law in our everyday activity is um, that of a deflated football or a basketball so have you ever noticed that once you keep your basketball or football outside over the night most times when you come back in the morning you find that that is deflated and this is as a result of decrease in temperature which leads to decrease in volume of the basketball unlike during the odds day where the temperature is high and then we have a high increase in the volume of the basketball or football so i hope you understand that with that in mind we have we can express it mathematically as volume is directly proportional to temperature our temperature is in kelvin so we have v is directly proportional to t where v is equals to kt that's introducing our constant k or we have k is equals to v over t where t is measured in kelvin k and v in centimeter cube so we can relate that we have v1 over t1 is equals to v2 over t2 so let's look 
let's look at the worked example in child's law all right so at 17 degrees celsius a sample of hydrogen gas occupies 225 centimeter cube what will be the vol what will the volume be at 100 degrees celsius if the pressure remains constant all right so what do we do first we list out our parameters all right so let's have that let's have that in mind always listing out our parameters first so we come across um 17 degrees celsius which means temperature so that's our t1 and note that um from the statement of charles law our temperature is in kelvin so how do we um convert celsius to kelvin we add 273 so that's why we have t1 is equal to 70 plus 273 which gives us 290 kelvin then our v1 that's our first volume is 125 centimeter cube we are looking for the new volume v2 while 200 degrees celsius we convert it to kelvin we have 373 kelvin i hope you understand that so now we can apply the charles law equation so we have our v2 is equals to t2 times Z, v1 over t1. Here we made v2 the subject of the formula. So we have 125 times 373 over 290, which gives us 161 centimeter cube. So the new volume of the gas is 161 centimeter cube. All right, general gas equation. Well, just like the name implies, it's just is the general gas equation. What it does is to um is to is general gas equation states that for a fixed mass of a gas under any set of condition V, P, and T, the value of P V over T must remain constant. Like I was saying earlier, what general gas law does is just to relate or give us a relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. So general gas law is P V over T is equals to K. So we can relate that as P1 V1 over T1 is equals to P2 V2 over T2. General gas equation is as a result of the merging of Boyce law and Charles law. All right, so we have our work example here at STP. STP means standard temperature and pressure. So at STP, a certain mass of gas occupies a volume of 790 centimeter cube. Find the temperature at which the gas occupies 1000 cm cube and has a pressure of 726 millimeter mercury. All right, so it says at STP, and I said STP means standard temperature and pressure. So these are standard units. As its name implies standard temperature standard temperature is zero degrees celsius and converting it to kelvin gives us 273 kelvin while standard pressure is 760 millimeter mercury these are standard values that do not change in science so we have p1 is equal to 760 millimeter mercury so now the question starts with at stp so our p1 would be 760 millimeter mercury t1273 kelvin while our v1 the first volume we come across it with is 790 centimeter cube we have our p2 from the question to be 726 millimeter mercury v2 1000 cm cube so we are looking for temperature so we make t2 the subject of the formula we make t2 the subject of the formula so we have we just insert our figures 726 times 1000 times 273 divided by 760 divided by 790 which gives us 330.1 kelvin so it's it's quite easy all right all right so let's move to dalton's law of partial pressure the law of partial pressure states that if there's a mixture of gases which do not react chemically together, then the total pressure exerted by the mixture is the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases that make up the mixture. Yeah, it's quite easy. It's, now, what Dalton's law of partial pressure is saying is, for instance, if we have a vessel that contains about three gases, ammonia, nitrogen, and oxygen gas. All right, so what it's saying is that the vessel containing the, pre the total pressure in the vessel containing ammonia, hydrogen, and oxygen gas will be equal to the sum of the pressure of the ammonia gas, 
the sum of the hydrogen gas and the oxygen gas. So that's why we have here P total is equals to PA plus PB plus PC, where PA, PB, PC are the partial pressure exerted separately by the individual gases A, B, and C. So A, B, and C could be any other gas. So in a situation where we have a gas that has been collected over water, that gas is likely to be saturated with water vapor. And so there, the total pressure of that gas becomes P total is equals to P gas plus pre-water vapor all right so um in the part two of this class we'll look into the work example of dalton's law of partial pressure so let's just go into our summary um boy's law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure provided that the temperature remains constant while charles law states that the volume of a given mass of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature in kelvin provided that the pressure remains constant well standard temperature and pressure or stp is at zero degrees celsius or 273 kelvin for temperature and 760 millimeter mercury for pressure the general gas equation gives the relationship between the volume pressure and temperature of a gas so by the side here we have the equation of the four laws we've looked into in this class all right so you just do this on your own to see how far you've understood what I've been taught in class today. So just state, number one, say state and explain boys and child law using a mathematical expression. Question two says state Dalton's law of partial pressure. Three says one thirty centimeter cube of a gas at 29 degrees Celsius exert a pressure of 750 millimeter mercury. Calculate its pressure if its volume is increased to 150 degrees to 150 centimeter cube at 35 degrees Celsius. So you just list out the parameters, find that, find out what is missing, and then you find out the formula that will be applicable to this question. Question four, yeah. Say, is a brain teaser actually? So, to what temperature must a given mass of nitrogen at zero degrees Celsius be heated so that both its volume and pressure will be doubled? All right, so I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you, and I hope you learned something new in class today.